You know, in my last What Happened To video, where we went over Tyler Walker and his abrupt disappearance from racing, well, this driver we're going over today ended his career after one single incident in 2008, and ever since then, the community has hardly heard from him since. Jeff Shepard was arguably one of the most noteworthy sprint car drivers in the late 90s and 2000s, especially in the PA area. So, ladies and gentlemen, what happened to Jeff Shepard? Jeff would begin driving sprint cars in the late 80s and even in the beginning, he would compete in races with the World of Outlaws, having a total of 13 races for the series through the rest of the 80s. It would take him until 1993 to get his first ever podium finish, which would be a sign for more things to come, as he would get his first ever victory with the All-Star Circuit of Champions the year after. Through the rest of the 90s, he would find much more success with the All-Stars, having a total of 21 victories and 28 podium finishes. Jeff would become a well-known name in the PA area, as some of you may know, he had a rivalry with Fred Raymer. He had really shown his talent on PA soil, gathering a total of 35 career wins in the area, and that's just for Lincoln, Williams Grove, Sillins Grove, and Port Royal, and not to mention his three PA Speed Week victories. In the early 2000s, Jeff's career would really start to kick off, competing full-time with the World of Outlaws Gum Out Series, finishing the season with six wins and placing third in points. This year, he would also get his first ever World of Outlaws victory, so following the success, he would become a full-time outlaw the year after, competing in all 94 races that season, which of course led to him having some success, getting five wins and 20 top fives, ultimately placing 10th in points. This would also be the year that him and Sammy had that badass battle at Bristol. Jeff even told an interesting story about it on the PA Sprinkler Live interview. Whenever he would come off the bottom of the speedway and slide up in front of my car, my race car would lift off of the ground and my helmet, the strap of my helmet was all but choking me by the time I got to the back end of the back stretch or the end of the front stretch because the vacuum, the draft behind him was, was trying to rip my helmet off. It was the craziest thing. So then after the thing is over, I had people come to me and say, oh my God, Jeff, can you believe you're doing 164 miles an hour? I was like, no. <laughs> if I, hey, if I'd have known that, I'd have parked it. Through the next two years, Jeff would return to the All-Star Circuit of Champions, placing third in points in 2002. Another series he would find success in was the NCRA, placing fifth in points, both in 02 and 03. 2004 would not be as eventful, as he had only competed in 12 races that season, but still had four wins on his belt. Jeff would start racing with the Central PA Point Series, having some bit of success through 06 and 07. In 2007, he would get his most important victory of his career, winning Wednesday's preliminary feature for the Knoxville Nationals. Sadly, this would be the same track where Jeff's career would come to an end. Just a year later, on the second night of the Nationals, Jeff would start ninth in the B Main. As he goes down the front stretch, he gets caught on the back of Brian Leppo, and this was the outcome. Jeff would be unconscious when the safety crew got to his car, but after they got him out, he would then be responsive, as he was taken to the hospital shortly after. This incident was so violent that his seat had bent forward, it seriously could have been more worse than it was. He would be taken off the ventilation system just a day later, but would still remain in critical but stable condition. He would have a brain bleed according to John Zemitis, which is the owner of the car. He goes on to state this in an interview with the Harrisburg Patriot News. The last three CAT scans have been identical, the brain is not bleeding anymore. Except for the head injury, there is a bruise on his shoulder, he's not all banged up, Zemita said. No bones broken, no injury to his back, there's a lot of hope when things clear up in the brain. Jeff would show signs of improvement through the rest of the month, having speech and physical therapy every week. But unfortunately, due to it being a head injury, he would have severe headaches. He would start talking on the 19th, and on this exact day, he would get transported to his home state, Maryland, at the Senate Hospital in Baltimore. Then on, his health would refine, eventually getting to go home on the 29th. Although still having short-term memory loss, but that would improve as he continued therapy. After this, Jeff would make the tough decision and retire from racing. He would distance himself from racing entirely, only going to a total of four races ever since the incident, and that's according to an interview he did in 2019. He sold all of his racing gear and seemed to just not want to be a part of it anymore, since his racing career was practically taken from him. Like, man, I sold all my helmets, I sold all my suits. I mean, I like, I just wanted to turn that page because, you know, it was taken from me. That's difficult. Anybody that I've talked to about that, something taken from them in their lives, we can all relate when our stories are, are very similar. So, As many of you know, head injuries are not something to mess with. There's only a good amount of hits you can take before it can become a lifelong problem. 
NFL players such as Luke Keekley and Jordan Reed retired solely because of head injuries, and the same with NASCAR driver Kurt Busch this year. Although Jeff never won any championships, he would still become a well-known name to many fans and drivers out there. He had ended his career with 87 total feature wins, one Bob Weikert Memorial, a Brad Doty Classic, and of course a Knoxville Nationals prelim night feature. As of four years ago, Jeff would get a job with a company that owned his infamous 4J car. He is simply just living his life, and no matter what he does in the future, gets back in the sprint car or never goes to a race again. He will always be known by many as Jeff the Jet Shepherd.